Today, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the first month after duodenal switch surgery. Hi, I'm Tina and welcome. Um, if you're new here, I had duodenal switch surgery on June 9th of 2020 and I'm here to share my journey. Anyway, here we go, deeper into the bad things. Um, so one of my followers on Instagram uh, messaged me and just suggested that I go a little bit more deep into what exactly happened right after surgery with your just your recovery and how you um what's going on with you the first month first few weeks and I thought about that a lot because I I didn't want to put anything too graphic or any too, anything too you know gross on YouTube just just my personality I just don't usually talk about those things but thinking about how I felt right before I went into surgery and you hear so many weird horror stories about people after duodenal switch surgery and I just really feel like I need to just go into more explanation about that stuff so um it's gonna be a little bit more graphic than I typically would like <laughs> to put on a video um uh, but I'm I'm just I have the pure pure heart. I just want to help. I know how you feel, and I know I've just been there, you know. And I I really remember how the, just how you read really bad horror stories online. I mean, people get all we get our information from our surgeon and from our surgeon's team, and then we go to online to see what real people are saying about it. So I mean, I just I get it. So um. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper. Here we go. Um, the first thing that um, I was thinking about right before surgery, I was pretty confident the whole time after I was approved and after I made the decision to do this, to go through with this, uh, I wasn't really worried or scared or anything until the night before. So the night before you have surgery, you have to take a shower and you have to wash your body with Hibby Cleanse and it's nasty. I it, I mean, it's just, it's, it dries your skin out bad and it just, it's just a nasty process. But so I took a shower, washed myself with that stuff, did everything I was supposed to do, went to bed. And I all of a sudden had all of these feelings and surgery is not, it's no joke. It really, it's really scary. And, um, I was just thinking about, because I knew I was going to go through with it. I knew I didn't go through this whole, all the process that I had to go through to get this surgery during a pandemic, no less, and flake out about it. I wasn't going to do that. I knew I was going to go through with it. But then I was just thinking, well, what if I don't make it? And what if I die? And so all night along, I was thinking about what should I do? Should I write letters to my family? Should I, um, you know, call my banks? I mean, I just had all these weird anxiety feelings all night long and I got no sleep. I mean, I didn't sleep at all the night before. And I kept waking or I doze off and then I'd wake up and I'd be like, what if I, you know, what if this happens or what if I have really bad complications and I, you know, I never, I'm never the same. I'm never healthy again. So not that I was healthy before, but just, I just didn't, I was just really had a lot of anxiety the night before. And then I had to wake up very, very early. So in order to get to the hospital in time, I had to be in the shower. I had to wash again with the Hibiclin stuff. Uh, I had to be up at four o'clock in the morning just to get ready to go to be to the hospital by, I had to be there by 5 a.m. So um, taking a shower again, getting ready to go. I had everything all packed up so I was ready. Um, but just getting myself ready and the whole time I'm taking a shower, I'm just thinking, I wonder if this is it. You know, this is my last shower, being able to take care of myself. You know, you just have these thoughts that come into your head. And yeah, that was my anxiety. And I had that up until I, we got to the hospital and everything happened so fast after that point. We immediately got called back, got called down, down to the surgery. I was immediately put into a room. Um, and they asked me if I was okay. And I said, no, I'm really kind of freaking out. So they gave me some, they put an IV in my arm and then they put something in the IV that really calmed me down. So that was the end of that whole thing. <laughs> and I don't really remember anything after that until after surgery, but 
Anyway, just kind of, if you're preparing for surgery, maybe just kind of brace yourself for those thoughts because I was completely strong and completely confident until that point, the night before. The night before I was just, I just had some really weird feelings and had some strange dreams and stuff. So um, the next thing that was, that I wanted to discuss is since I've had surgery, I, um, well, let's backtrack a little bit. So after I had surgery, I was in the hospital and I, you know, they have all these, they have a um, IV in you constantly when you're in the hospital and they're putting pain medication in there. I'm assuming they're putting some kind of nutrients in there. Um, so I felt pretty good. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't feel, I felt, I didn't feel any nausea. I didn't feel any pain or anything because I believe it's the medicine they gave me. And they gave me this little patch that I put behind my ear that for nausea. And I didn't even, I didn't complain of nausea. I think that was just a preemptive thing that they did. Thank goodness. But I didn't have any of that. But I was still, I, I had all these things hooked to me. And sometimes I just wanted to get up and go to the bathroom or walk around or just be free of that. And it really got on my nerves, having all these things. And every time you wanted to do anything, you had to alert a nurse. And then the nurse would come and then help you get all this, you know. It was a little bit cumbersome. I was getting really anxious to go home. I couldn't go home right away because I had a complication. I had a blood clot in my intestine that they had to remove the next day. So that was a little bit frustrating. And the other thing that was really frustrating and hard for me when I was in the hospital is that I'm a person that likes to shower every day. And especially after having that Hibiclean situation, and you can't, they would not let me take a shower. I, I, there was a shower in my room and my husband was there, he would have helped me, but they they were just adamant that I shouldn't take a shower. And she gave me this um, stuff in a bag, like a hat, to put on my head and kind of massage it through my hair. And she said it was the same thing as washing my hair. And it, it made my hair so disgusting. So after that, I just, it made that whole thing so much worse. But they, they still just kept saying no, no, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to not do what I was told at the hospital just because what if there was a reason that they weren't really sharing. So I didn't take a shower until I got home, but it was, it was pretty rough for me. Um, and then this is the other thing that people, I know people read online and let me just discuss the whole bowel issue. Okay. This is not an easy topic for me. Um, so before I had my surgery, I was going through this process where I was taking a lot of vitamins. Um, he had given just, there's, they give you a lot of vitamins preoperatively just to get your body ready and make sure that you're, you know, you can get used to it because it's going to, you're going to have a, a lot more to take after surgery. So I guess just to get you used to it maybe, but I was taking a lot of vitamins, a lot of iron and a lot of calcium. And with those two things, and plus I was taking, I was drinking protein shakes the last couple, the couple weeks before my surgery. And those three things just made me incredibly, unbelievably constipated. I mean, it was really bad. It was painful and I kept trying. They had told me to take a Benefiber and just different over-the-counter things that you could take for being constipated, but those things didn't work. And um, I've never been constipated like that in my whole life. I mean, it was just, I, I've, I've read since about people having to go into the emergency room because they are they're, um, because they can't go to the bathroom. And I get it, like I understand that. It, it, gets, it can get really, really bad if it gets out of control. And then I, I started taking, um, I was taking smooth move tea. I was taking Benefiber. I mean, I was trying to do all of the things that they said and none of those things worked for me at all. And finally I read, I was in my pantry and I had a, we had a bottle of mineral oil for um, treating a natural cutting board that we own. And I looked at it and it said laxative and I, so I said, I'm just going to try it. And then my husband Googled it and he found out it wasn't, it was safe. So I took 
three two spoonfuls of mineral oil and the next morning I was everything was everything was perfect like everything was normal everything was great I felt so much better so my suggestion will always be to anybody don't spend a lot of money on ridiculous things that probably at least for me I mean it might work for people but it doesn't work for me at all and I don't have a history of being constipated so yeah and then so then after surgery and this is what my doctor said and my nutritionist said they said when you're just having nothing but liquids liquid in liquid out so after surgery I had diarrhea and the other thing that's disturbing and I I'm not real excited to share about but it's because of all the iron it's black so um it, it I started having diarrhea in it for a month so one month af after my surgery I had diarrhea all the time and um I've read people that say that they mess their pants or you know just crazy things that happen to people. And I mean, I understand that that probably happens. And if you feel like you're gonna pass gas, you just don't assume that that's what it is, okay? I'm just gonna say that. Don't assume it's gas. Um, so I had one situation where I uh, soiled my underwear. And after that, I went to the store and I got some extra long maxi pads and um started wearing those every day and i didn't it's not that i needed them all the time but just ha wearing that and having knowing that that was there was just really it helped my anxiety around it so if i wanted to go somewhere if i wanted to go to the store or if i wanted to go walk around or whatever i didn't have any anxiety about it because if i did if a little bit happened i would be covered so that's my suggestion mineral oil <laughs> if you're constipated and after, if you get diarrhea, I would get an extra long maxi pad or something of that nature and just position it so that you're, that it will cover you. And just, it, it's just for peace of mind and just makes it a lot easier to deal with. So, um, and then, so those are my things that I didn't want to really share because it feels, it's just not my favorite thing to talk about and it's kind of gross. Um, but I, I just hope to help people. And if you have any questions, please comment or message me. I am I, I so much want to help you. I know I know exactly how it feels. And I know um now that it's all I'm past all of those things, how number one, I'm relieved I'm past all those things. Like it's just a very brief time after your surgery or right before your surgery that you're dealing with these things. Um but it 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 does kind of suck. It's not the most fun. So on top of that, you're not eating, so you feel kind of weak, and you got stuff going on, incisions on your stomach that are healing, and um, I just, I just, it, it's not, it's never, I, mean, I can't paint it, it's not going to be a rosy, you know, situation, I'm not going to paint it like it's just nothing, because it is something, it's major surgery, and it's a major life-changing event, um, but the bad things do pass, and they pass fast, I'm, um, four months out now and I don't have any of those issues anymore. So, um, and I, I think two months out, I overcame most of them. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to somebody and I hope I didn't offend anybody. <laughs> um, just, I'm just trying to be a helpful person. So anyway, thank you. And thank you to my friend on Instagram that, uh, encouraged me to be a little bit more graphic about it. I mean, you're, it makes sense what you said and I appreciate it. So anyway, thank you. Um, have a great day. Bye.